Can we stop these fucking opening helicopter shots over fucking water in movies, please? Your movie is called fucking Snakes on a Plane, and this bland title screen gets the okay? This title should pop off the screen with colors! And the background should be the result of a Motley Crue album cover fucking a Vixen album cover after a long night of tequila and regrettable tattoos. After showing us people having fun on a beach somewhere, a movie can't wait to get on the helicopter again to show us more fucking water! Why even hit the beach if we're gonna leave one minute later? One minute and 16 seconds of motorcycle porn. Every time I see something like this, I think, so, this guy came up with a story about snakes on a plane with his buddy, and his buddy's like, we should write this together. And the first guy's like, huh? I don't want to write it. Get some other asshole to write it. Wait, you want to write it? There's absolutely nothing happening on this bridge. No people are visible, and there's no commotion. But then suddenly, this guy hanging by his ankles appears in front of the Red Bull motorcycle dude. They say the higher you aim, the farther you fall. F***ing what? Look, I've never witnessed a murder, and you can't prove it either. But, even if I did, I'd know better than to start up a loud-ass motorcycle close to the scene before the bad guys were out of earshot. Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, and maybe you can chase down Sean in your SUV instead of giving up, because your henchman has terrible aim. I haven't seen this many unnecessary shots of women in bikinis since that episode of Magnum P.I. where, well, actually, every f***ing episode of Magnum P.I. Good to see this guy has a giant case of emergency Red Bull stashed behind the TV, just in case the Red Bull vault under his chair ever runs out. Also, he's gone through three cans already, which means he has so many wings that not only is Paul McCartney growing out of his shoulders, but so is f***ing Jeff Britton. Whenever I visit a murder witness, I climb their balcony. I mean, I don't know what I would have done if Sean hadn't noticed the bad guys breaking into his apartment, but the important thing is that nothing bad could have happened because nothing bad did happen. You witnessed a murder and didn't tell anybody. Why didn't you call the police? The news said they were corrupt, so I figured they'd be in on it. Smart kid. Yeah, but he didn't know about the police being corrupt until he was all the way back to his apartment. Are you saying that if the news didn't mention the police corruption, the next thing he was going to do was make a call to the cops? Man, Red Bull's got more screen time in this movie so far than Samuel L. Jackson has. What if I didn't see him clearly? Well, shouldn't matter since the victim was nice enough to say Eddie Kim's full name while you were hiding in the bushes. Where did these fans come from? Armed and ready with their notebooks. This is an airport. You're not outside a concert venue. Can I get your autograph? Oh, you need a little more than that. <laughs> but in the end, she still gets just his autograph and a ruined top. Also, autograph assault. Alright, look, we gotta make sure we got some more of this, alright? So he's the reason I couldn't find any of this shit in March 2020? Aw, Claire, don't go. The defense of this movie I hear a lot is, it's just snakes on a plane, what more did you expect? But I think the real problem with this movie is that it's so much more than snakes on a plane. Take, for instance, the focus on Claire's last day. Do we need to know it's her last day? Does it add anything? It does not. Sorry, she gets nervous flying. I have been to the airport roughly 30 to 40 times in the last five years, and I have never seen someone apologize for any noise they make. Am I sending politeness? I'm sending politeness. Is that our plane? No. Every cop in Honolulu thinks it is. Okay, smart, but don't you think you should have disguised your witness a little better? And maybe not wear an obvious FBI earpiece? You know, if you're so worried about corrupt cops and sh**. South Pacific Air 121. These asshole FBI guys are making such a production about this particular plane, kicking people out of first class, bringing bomb-sniffing dogs aboard, that all the stuff they did with the decoy plane was a waste of time. I was hoping you'd be the sky candy on this flight. I like David Koechner. I really do. But I feel like the writer's creative drive for this character was simply, what if Champ Kind left sports casting to become a pilot? I'm soaking the laser that the pheromone will make these guys go f crazy. Makes sense. I've always felt like if you've done some really criminal sh** and you need to kill a witness, you just unleash a whole bunch of snakes on a plane to get the job done. The success rate is through the roof. Also, considering Eddie Kim's men just figured out what plane Sean was going to be on, how are they able to get a large crate of snakes aboard? And all of these lays sprayed with pheromones before takeoff. The FBI would be watching that plane until it's up in the air, right? Unfortunately, first class is overbooked. So wait, do people buy a ticket for this plane and say, I want first class when they board? Wouldn't everybody know about the first class situation before they board? Coach? Is it safe there? I can't think of any scenario where this line is funny, but on top of that, it makes no sense. Earlier, Mercedes was sitting in the airport around the coach passengers. If she was this uptight about like this, shouldn't she be in a Delta lounge or whatever douchebag environment this airline offers first class passengers before they board? Oh, yeah. I should witness murders more often. Since no one else is up here other than Flynn, John, and Sean, why are these two sitting right on top of each other? I know Flynn and John have to keep a close eye on Sean, but there are instances before the snakes on the plane portion where Sean is sitting by himself. Are you sure about this? Accidents happen. You think I didn't exhaust every other option? The movie tries to justify its plot by insinuating the bad guy did everything to kill the witness. You see, he doesn't want to go with option 245,000 snakes on a plane, but God damn it, what else is left? Let me see if I oh, can help. Oh, oh, sweet, uh, could you let her know not to touch? Me? She clearly didn't touch you, just your ticket. Also, this is Sonny Mabry. 
End of sin. Jesus, spending this much time on these two deep tonguing should have been enough to give the movie an R rating. I'm pretty sure I contracted gonorrhea watching them. Get these motherfucking horny bastards off my motherfucking plane! Baby got back, Hi there. front and side to side. Does one of the G's and three G's stand for gross? Then why can't you come with us? Oh good, we've got a couple kids without their parents. So other people will have to risk their lives for them. I feel like just about every filmmaker and writer has taken the wrong things away from Jurassic Park. At this time, I would like your full attention. Holy f***, movie has time for the flight attendant safety guidelines spiel. Can we get to the goddamn snakes already? I'm Tiffany. Where the f*** did Sam Jackson go? So, wait, is this saying the snakes get released at 35,000 feet? Is this speed, but with snakes? I guess nobody wants to see a movie called Feet. I'm gonna miss these night flights. I enjoy the passengers so much better when they're unconscious. But not all the passengers are asleep right now, and the landlady from Kingpin said that loud enough for most of them to hear her. Why is this scene? That picture has a lot of color in it, considering Sean is using the standard number two pencil. If you hated flying this much, why did you let me pick Hawaii for our honeymoon? Because that's where you wanted to go. Aww. Got me. Jesus Christ, Flynn just got back less than a minute ago. Now he's already wandering around the plane again? Booty go thump. Yeah, yeah my booty went thump. Yeah, I know, that's right. I haven't seen flirting this bad in a movie since the scar comparison scene in Jaws. Movie makes the terrible mistake of killing the kitty. I don't care how clear your eyes are or how full your heart is, pulling that smoke detector down would set off an alarm alerting the flight crew. I am not going to prove it to you, but they don't take off their pants. If you're going to smoke weed and have sex in an airplane bathroom, why stop there? You're telling me you're going to do everything naughty you can do, but when it comes to sex, you settle on dry humping? Wax snake moan. Mile well, high club. We are happy you chose South Pacific Air for your travel needs. Our flight attendants encourage you to f your brains out while on our planes. We just lost avionics. Notify LAX. After the captain dies, Rick tells Flynn that they are halfway between Honolulu and LA. So that puts them somewhere around 1,500 miles away. LAX would not currently be in contact range. At this point, the snake secret would definitely be out. Somehow, it takes roughly eight minutes before anyone who doesn't die notices. These are malicious snakes driven crazy by pheromones. Do you really think that they're going to writhe around on the floor for eight minutes and not make their presence felt? That's my big boy. Making small talk with your penis. We won't show or even blur the part where the snake bites this dude's big boy, but I want to meet the CGI person that came home and told their significant other, Today I animated a snake biting a man's dong. Excuse me, she just wants a treat. <laughs> Who goes through a purse like this? There's no reason she wouldn't be looking down, except the movie doesn't need her to see the snake just yet. Getting late. Okay, I get confused occasionally with this timeline. So this is Elena and her son Marcos, but I'm not sure if she's told Dom he's the father yet. Also, if I'm not mistaken, the Shaw brothers are going to board this plane and save the baby. It'd be cute because the baby will be wearing headphones while snakes slither around him. But the continuity of these things are so weird, this could be during the Tokyo Drift days. Okay, wait a minute. Flynn just went up to the cockpit and found out one of the pilots was dead and the plane was in trouble. So his immediate response to that was to go to f***ing sleep. When we see all these snakes coming down with the oxygen masks, it seems like the movie's totally forgotten about the brood of snakes that were all over the floor a second ago. <laughs> Parcel tongue. I've got a video phobia. Snake. I would have removed every sin if he said he had some other phobia completely unrelated to snakes or even flying. <laughs> Just kidding, I would have sinned that too. But it would have been hilarious if he went, I've got a taxophobia, fear of uncleanliness. I didn't wake grandma! Of course, the movie sets up nearly everyone to be, um, snakes, so that you don't mind if they get killed by the biological snakes. Sure, their deaths will cleanse our souls during the ascension, but there's really not much to root for in this movie. Look, I appreciate the fact that this microwave has a snake setting, but how good is it if the snake is just going to explode? I'm still hungry, and now I've got to go back into the woods to get my dinner. Grab everything from the overheads, under the seats, and let's build a wall! Did I miss the part where they managed to get the snakes all on one side of the plane for a wall to be effective? Why are there no snakes on the front of the plane when they've been shown to be coming from everywhere? I'm gonna put you on my back. We're gonna move towards the front, okay? I get that Tiffany was knocked unconscious, but why is this guy still back here? Is he gonna die? No, honey. I guess Juliana Margulies forgot she wasn't on the set of ER for a second. Fast and Furious was alive this whole time as well. How did she and Discount Paris Hilton avoid being attacked while unconscious in this section of the plane? And Maria's baby is still alive? He's shaking a goddamn rattle. Do the snakes think he's one of them? Also, how is Gracie even able to walk around here without being attacked? These snakes are f***ing everywhere. We missed the bastards. Because they were cold-blooded. Fine, snakes can't generate heat, so they wouldn't be picked up on the sensors, but no one looked behind the goddamn lays. Oh yeah, I remember this guy? Is it possible for a murder witness to be a MacGuffin? And any one of those slimy little pieces of sh can trip a circuit or a relay or hydraulic, and this bird goes down faster than a tie hooker. Why did we need to bring tie hookers into this discussion again? Does it make the situation sound any more dangerous to compare a plane's descent to a hooker's going down speed? What's really f***ed up is after this, he's going to be sent to the Well of Souls, and he's going to scare the sh 
out of Marion Ravenwood. He can't possibly guarantee that the snakes are going to get to Sean. Yeah, well, he doesn't have to guarantee it if he brings the whole plane down. Yeah, but a bomb could do that just as easily. I'm just saying, if it was that easy for Eddie Kim to get snakes aboard the plane at the last minute, surely he could have gotten other things on board as well. Hey, tell surveillance, don't let Eddie Kim out of their sight. Does this really need to be said? Isn't the point of surveillance to keep the person they're keeping tabs on in sight? All right, we have to, uh, we have to suck out the poison. Oh, there'll be no sucking. Man, Troy, get this man away from my ass! You... Stupid myth about sucking the poison out turns into old homophobic joke that's been around for ages and adds nothing to this film whatsoever. Also, Big Leroy is lying when he says there'll be no sucking because that's all this movie is. That's what I'm talking about. <sighs> you know, considering that we've seen the snakes come through the oxygen mask compartments and through the ceilings of the bathroom, down on the coach level of the plane, I don't quite understand why the snakes haven't been able to breach the first class level. Of course, the way this plane is constructed is a total mystery, and all of it is probably a lie, but I think the snake's inability to get up here is total bullshit. What was the first thing I said to you? Do as they say you live! Dude, you. You don't remember that. His name is Dr. Stephen Price. He's, he's some kind of hardcore snake specialist. And Custom uses them as their go-to guy. All we need to know here is the guy's name and that he deals with snakes. The rest of this conversation is just filler, and movie is already testing my patience with a 105-minute runtime. They're especially fond of those f***ing lays. Well, you can't eat just one. Speaking of one, Flynn only saw one snake entangled with a lay earlier, and he's somehow able to make a determination about the snake's fondness for lays from that. This green snake eye view lets me know absolutely f***ing nothing. Looks like you offended the wrong tie hooker fan. All we need is a digital camera and a computer. Yeah. Or this. It's got both. I feel like we're in a movie made in 2045, and to illustrate to a 2045 audience that technology wasn't as amazing as it will be then, they inserted this scene as a joke. It's like the mojo in Almost Famous. It's a very modern machine that transmits pages over the telephone. It only takes 18 minutes a page. <laughs> We can't show it in the movie for some reason, probably budget, so you'll just have to trust me on this one, okay? I don't wish death on anyone. Letting this perfectly pleasant couple get killed before this guy is not okay. Also, we've got phone. We've got no phone. How the f*** did a python get into the glass casing for these lights? Even if it can, why did it go all the way up here? You're making everyone look like an asshole, python. Okay, the dickheads on this plane are officially just plain cruel, and not even comically so. It's not even going to be fun when this guy gets swallowed whole by the python in a few seconds. We gotta block the stairs! Grab bags! Everyone! There were only three people in first class. Where the f*** are all these bags coming from? I bet there was a two-day conversation on how they could have made that plane disappear behind a cliff before pulling up at the last minute to make this more suspenseful. And, of course, the inflatable wrap fits perfectly into the space provided because movie. And you know, Claire, I think I'm gonna need your shirt, too. I think this movie actually believes this character is charming. Also, Maria showed Claire how to treat snake bites earlier with the kid, but she's just going to leave Rick's Popeye arm untreated. Maybe he doesn't deserve much compassion, but they need him to fly and land the plane. I honestly don't know what the pictures of the snakes actually do to help the snake expert guy. He just told Flynn that they need to know the exact snake that bit someone to give them the proper antivenom. And while they could somehow round up the specific antivenom they need, it would require someone to tell them which snake bit them, and they don't have a chance in hell of remembering that. Beyond that, most of the people we've seen in this movie who got bit have died already. What are you drawing there, sweetie? Cobra shadowing. Flynn, it's too hot. Instead of just telling Flynn and Claire that he doesn't think the air is recycling, he wastes time by telling them it's too hot, which does him nothing. It's like the pronoun game for air circulation. And no one in Hawaii because snakes aren't indigenous to Hawaii. Yeah, but Eddie Kim lives in LA. Could he have shot locally? You're telling me that Eddie Kim sat around trying to find a solution to kill his murder witness? And <laughs> time running out, he called the best snake guy in LA to ship the snakes to Hawaii, which is at least a six-hour flight? At what point do you think to yourself, well, I like my plan because it's insane. I don't think I have time to pull it off. Get off me, man! I told y'all stop touching on me and coughing on me! It's disgusting up in here! Unaired footage of the Amy Coney Barrett Rose Garden ceremony finally makes its way into a 2006 film. Also, what the f*** even is this scene? Sure, 3G's has been a bit of an asshole, but this scene wants to set him up as another villain now that the British douche is dead. However, a couple scenes later, he's a apologizing for his actions here and is forgiven, making this tantrum moot. Once again, should have stuck more to snakes on a plane and less to people getting upset on a plane. I do not care about any of these characters. Sitting how shitty these snakes look seem too easy, so I avoided it up till now, but god damn it, these things look terrible. Even for 2006 CGI. Alright, so where's this outflow breaker panel you were talking about? No one will be seated while Agent Flynn looks for the outflow breaker panel. I guess I don't doubt that there would be snakes still around down here, but there were absolutely no snakes in the other parts of the plane he just crawled through. So the only reason there are snakes here now is because the movie needs to make pulling a lever more exciting. As you watch this helicopter fly over this remote place in California, go ahead and tack on two more hours to the time it took this dude to wrangle poisonous snakes and get them to the airport in time to fly to Hawaii. I want a list of every snake on that plane. 
on the clip for you. Whoa, whoa, this guy deals in illegal snakes and he inventory those motherfuckers for a quickie snakes on a plane crime? Everybody listen. They have the anti-venom. What do you mean, the anti-venom? I thought there were multiple snakes and multiple venoms to worry about. Okay, so the pilot is finally dead and it appears more snakes got in the cockpit. But my question is, once the first pilot went down to check on the airplane circuitry and got bitten by a snake, and this guy got bitten from a snake down there, why did he keep that panel open? Enough is enough! I have had it with these mother snakes on this mother plane! The reshoot that made this line possible probably added a million dollars to this movie's budget and about 17 bucks to its box office. Remember, it's going to be loud and it's going to be cold. Hold your breath. Hold your breath? Look, this entire plan is 1,000 kinds of stupid, but that doesn't make this advice any less terrible. Holding your breath when the interior of a plane is depressurizing could do serious damage to the lungs and potentially kill you. Speaking of which, wouldn't it be much better to simply try to beat these snakes down or put a bunch of lays in a few seat cases and close them inside when they start f***ing them? Anything but this depressurized bull Sir, I suggest you relinquish the pilot's chair to someone more experienced. Oh, okay. I guess we should have thought about that before we brought Kane and Thompson up to the cockpit. Your assumption that we passed on the retired 747 pilot is accurate. Oh, praise us to the PlayStation! What kind of goals would put a PlayStation ad in their sh like this? Certainly not anyone who would do a Fight Club omelet. Those two disparate sentences will make sense to someone, I think. Whoa, whoa, Julianne. Watch those hands. Just because David Koechner's character is dead doesn't mean you have to carry on his legacy. Did anyone see the snake that bit this boy? This is going to be the only person that got bit who's going to have anything like this. Everyone else is screwed. But then again, I think there's just one other guy still alive who got bit. So the whole gotta get the anti-venom part of this story was kind of a waste of time. This snake comes from the outside of the plane, traveling in midair. The only way this could have happened is if someone found the snake and then threw it at Sean. I'm ripping your shirt here to show everyone you had on a bulletproof vest, even though that's completely unnecessary. But it'll be nice for the audience. Also, wouldn't that have prevented the snake from biting into his chest? So why risk shooting him even if he has a vest on? Guy we were led to believe was gay is actually heterosexual, and now I'm beginning to think this revelation might be even more offensive cliche. Call me. Well, you're FBI, so you probably don't need my number, so. Thank you. Saying thank you after someone kisses you. Did Flynn and Sean have such a great time together that Flynn's willing to go surfing with the dude now? And I hope that murder trial is already over because this seems a little over the line and maybe dangerous. This band is named Cobra Starship. That is all. Oh, and because it's 2006, of course the band ran into Fallout Boy because you couldn't go to an airport without running into Fallout Boy in the mid aughts. How'd you get up here? Yeah, I defeated the impenetrable security that is a curtain with Velcro. Did you know that we create monthly exclusive videos for our Sin Club members? Bonus outtakes. I don't know, Peter. Meth is a hell of a drug. Extra Sins videos. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. And even member chosen Sin commentaries. I love this. <laughs> I love this this kind of, uh, of a Sin because it's just, it's so silly. Pick our next video and see the exclusives at patreon.com slash cinemasins. Or click the link in the description below. Spider-Man is not a parade. You do not need to stop traffic for Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Truth is, you're the weak, and I am the tyranny of evil men. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Don't tase me, bro! Don't tase me! I want a crisis team at LAX, ASAP. But I need the cargo manifest for every scrap of freight on South Pacific Air 121. We never lost an American in space. We're sure as hell not going to lose one on my watch. Failure is not an option. Do you remember the first thing I ever said to you? I, I, I know that things have changed. Describe what Marcellus Wallace looks like. I don't think you understand the magnitude of what you're dealing with here. Well, this is not a boat accident. It wasn't any propeller. It wasn't any coral reef. And it wasn't Jack the Ripper. Now what we need to do is go back in there and find all the dead snakes we can so the doctors on the ground will know... <laughs> What's the matter with you, Clarence? No, this guy's a gangster. His real name is Clarence. You know we go back to when we were kids, all right? But I don't even recognize you right now. What you doing with all this gun, man? I want you to get back. You changed, man. You can't throw the main switch by hand. You've got to pump up the primer handle in order to get the charge. It's large, flat, and gray. I have to warn you. I've heard relationships based on intense experiences never work. Okay. We'll have to base it on sex then.